Okay, tricky par four. This is a real thinking man's hole, this one is. There's trouble right and there's trouble left. There's trouble right in the form of water. There's trouble left in the form of bunkers. I've come off a slightly more forward tee just because I think this highlights it better. I've got to think a little bit more off this tee. The bunker that's down there in the middle would be the ideal target line, but it's playing about 290. So that's really in my range for driver. And if I'm super honest, this hole has never been driver in a million years because one, it's not long anyway. It's about 360 off this tee, 370 yards off this tee. But it bottlenecks in. It gets tighter and tighter and tighter. So I'm going to play on this hole a shot where I'm going to avoid all of the trouble. The bunker on the left off this tee is 202 metres away. So that's 220 yards away. I'm going to zap that just to double check. So it's good to have a look at the course planner and zapper or your range finder just to see that. So the bunker on the left, I'm going to go front left of that bunker. Yeah, it's 215 to front left of that bunker. Now, if I hit on that line or slightly to the right of that, I've got loads of fairway and I would literally, I would leave myself less than 140 yards in. So it's kind of one of those holes where you just don't have to attack it. Excuse how many golf clubs I've got in my bag at the moment. <laughs> you just don't have to attack it. And again, I'm going to play the idea that trouble's on the right. The big trouble is on the right. Bunker, yes, it's a hazard, but it's not, it's not going to take me out of the hole. Water is. I'm going to aim up the right. I'm going to tee up on the right-hand side. I'm going to aim diagonally back towards the left, towards those bunkers. But now I've got a golf club that I know I will not hit those bunkers. Simply. I cannot hit that bunker on the left, unless I absolutely killed one. So I'm going with four iron. Um, I'm not going to ideally hit it at that bunker, but that is the bad miss. I'm going to go just to the right of that bunker that I cannot hit. So it's in the fairway. Now I've played every shot as I would do normally. I have pushed that. And I've got unbelievably away with that. Wow. I pushed that golf shot a good 25 yards away from my intended target line. <laughs> Terrible. But you know what? I've hit the fairway because I played sensibly. I teed it up on the safe side of the tee. I aimed diagonally to the left, knowing that I could hit this as hard as I wanted. It wouldn't go in the bunker. And granted... I have hit a terrible golf shot and I've pushed it. But because I aimed far enough left diagonally, I am still on dry land. In fact, I'm on the fairway. And in fact, probably even better going at the flag now. So it's kind of, I'm giving myself misses. If I miss that, if I would have aimed somewhere near straight and missed that as far to the right, that ball would have been wet. That ball right now would have been in the water. But luckily, I got away with it. Big style got away with it. So that, that was a perfect example of a good miss. As a good miss will go, that is a perfect example. I aimed at those bunkers there on the left, and I knew I couldn't reach those. That's where I aimed. I pushed that. Terrible golf shot. But because I gave myself enough leeway, I've actually caught the right side of the fairway in a good location to the flag, and we didn't get wet. Very fortunate. I did that because it was a short hole. I, I'm going to give this a zap. I'm only 107 yards into the flag there. So four iron off the tee has not punished me because it is a short hole. Uh, I'm going to go on my gap wedge. This is a definite green flag. There is just nothing stopping me from attacking this. There's absolutely nothing. If that pin was further to the right, middle of the green, it might be more amber. If that pin was at the right of the, flat, of the green, definite red. So if it was red, I'd have to aim more towards middle slash left so it's safe. As this flag got closer to the water, it'd be harder and harder shot. So 107, I'm going to hit a gap wedge, see if we can make a birdie. It's almost a full one of these for me. Not much wind. And this is green light. Attack this flag.
Get off it, wind. You know what? Bit of hidden wind. A little bit of hidden wind there, because that started on the flag and then just started moving to the left. I think I'm going to be putting or chipping from there. You know what? Really disappointed with that. Because that was a green flag. Every day it was a green flag. And I've just pulled it a fraction left. And this has made this incredibly hard because it's on the, the fringe. If I'm here, I'm putting all day. If I'm here, I've got to take a wedge. In that middle section, I've got loads of different clubs. I actually hit the green pin high, but maybe I was slightly scared of that water after that push on the uh, tee shot. Um, let me have a think about this. My brain tells me putter because I always have this idea that a, the worst putt is always better than the worst chip. If I went with 9-9 or lob wedge from here, I feel like the grass could chew it up. I feel like the unpredictability of the bounce could mess the shot up. Where, because I'm right on the fringe, I can still get putter on that ball. I've got an uphill putt. Straighten out the flag. Optimistically, it's straightening out the flag. If, I, if this ball was here, for example, and I'll play it in a minute after I play this one. If it was here, I can't now use putter. I've got to use, I brought out 9-9 and, and sand wedge. I'm here, I've just about made it so I can still use my putter. I've got an uphill putt, slightly right to left. Speed is key. And I'm just going to, on this, typical, on this type of shot, just ever so slightly hover the putter so that this grass doesn't get interfered with the shot. I don't want that grass to be snagging up my putter. I don't feel like this fringe bit is going to make any effect on the speed. Not enormous anyway. It's quite a low cut fringe. Hover the club, hover the putter slightly. Okay, that's short. But let's let's look at that though. That wasn't a good shot. I was unconfident there. For me, that was as bad as I could have put that. That was as bad as I could have actually put that to the hole. If I played it with a wedge or a sand wedge, how bad could it have been? The worst shot with a sand wedge or a chip, chipping club and iron would be much, much worse. Now I've got a testing one for par, which is not what I really want on this hole, because this is relatively straightforward, easy one. Even though it's tricky and made you think off the tee, after that, it's been pretty straightforward. I don't see much in this, pretty straight up the hill. This is where confidence comes in. It has to drop, keep me going. Just, just. I've got to think though, let me just throw that back. And let's say it did go in that, it, it took one more hop and moved into this. Putter now is just not doable. It's just not accessible. So I've got nine iron, because I don't really have to get over anything. I'm gonna play it with a putting style stroke, low to the ground, not too much wrist hinge. Land it just short and run it up. Worse than my putter. Worse than my putter, even though I chipped chip that quite nicely. My putting shot finished there, my chip finished there. And that just highlights, that wasn't a bad connection. It really wasn't. I went further back, and now I'm in the longer grass. I've got to take more loft. This, club's, this shot's now buried. I can't put it, no way. I can't even nine iron it. I've got to get sand wedge on it. And that's the bad shots. And that's kind of what I'm trying to highlight there. I, d I thought I did that very well. <laughs> Was how bad a bad chip can be. A bad chip will always outweigh, will always be worse than a bad putt. What you've got to do is let the golf course force you into taking shots. 
you've got to you've got to let the golf course force you if you don't necessarily need to take a wedge or a chipper don't put it every day of the week so a par down that hole after some trials and tribulations safe off the tee i aimed in the right place off the tee and pushed it so it's still safe i felt like this flag in this whole position was a complete green light it was attack 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 because i'm way away from the water but just didn't maybe factor in for a little bit of breeze coming off the right hand side and missed it the golf course then made my decision up for me because i was just in that rough just without being in the thick stuff putter every day of the week and it was a poor putt but as it highlighted a poor putt is always better than a poor chip hold a decent par putt no harm done but kind of one of those holes where it could have been a lot worse if i'd have just made some different choices could have been much much worse but come off with a par and really i didn't play it well at all thanks for watching guys hopefully you're enjoying these course management videos if you are click thumbs up comment below what do you think i should have done different on that hole and what maybe would you have done different on that hole also if you are new to my channel never seen my stuff before i'd massively appreciate it if you subscribe by clicking the big red button down here Thanks to Lumina for letting us come down here and film. I mean, this is just perfect. Perfect. Got a couple more holes to come. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.